let's we'll see what we're up to today. Today, we have two batteries have showed up. The reason those two batteries have showed up is because my UPS has got two dead batteries in it. And we have a power outage scheduled at the end of the month, which is not very far away. Um, so, of course, I'm running everything on the house battery at the moment, which feeds into this little panel up here. So I am running my modem on battery at the moment, so I still have internet, and I still have some lighting and whatnot all available here as well, uh, including an auxiliary computer, which is an Arduino AT Mega. Um, now, I've got to get the cover off my UPS, which I've already done to identify the batteries, and I've got to clear a little bit of space here, and then figure out how to get the old batteries out, because it's not that simple. So we're going to start this off halfway through the disassembly, which is a bit unusual for me. But uh, at the moment, this is just filming a task I have to do anyway. So let's get on with it. Shifted our camera angle. Let's clear some space for GPS. Uh, UPS. I am tired. Now this thing is heavy as buggery. It's got a big ass wire wound transformer it's certainly not switch mode which is not necessarily a bad thing um so we're center tapped 16 volt either side for a grand total of 29.5 volts and here's the two batteries here now i've already removed two screws either side of this bracket here so this is free to move we're going to rip off the link cable and um now we have to figure out how to get this out now, I know this back panel comes off very easily, but we'd have to undo the transformer and slide them out. They don't appear to want to slide out sideways. So I think that replacing the batteries in this was a bit of an afterthought. I'm thinking I'm going to have to take this front panel off and take them out that way. So, I'm encountering the internals of this for the first time. Um while you're filming this and I'm trying to think and do scripting at once and tired so I'm prone to make a few slip-ups so you will have to bear with me here what I'm doing here I'm just going to disconnect all the obvious connections to the front panel um, so that that should come away fairly easily luckily there's no ribbon cables because I hate ribbon cables like those little plastic mylar ones now um, it appears to be this metal frame here seems to be the backing that holds this on. So, let's see. Can we get a screwdriver in here? I am using an insulated screwdriver with good reason. Um, it's worth noting that these two sections here, these are either half of the inverter. The heat sink is actually a conductive component. Putting my hand across there could be a problem. I also, this was only plugged earlier today, or unplugged earlier today. I'm not sure if there's a capacitor in here that's still carrying voltage, so an insulated screwdriver is generally a sensible idea. So, let's get this screw out, and I will get a magnet, I think, to fish those screws out. Um, there's a whole bunch of them laying behind the camera here, too. Um, let's see if I can get you out. There we go. And I'll try and get this front panel off. Worryingly, I'm not seeing any screws down below. So, either there's only two screws holding this on and a couple of plastic clips that are going to break at the bottom. Or, I think I see a bunch more screws holding on the front panel that are behind the battery in such a way that I'm probably not going to get at them. Wait, I have... This, this whole panel here is slightly loose. I wonder if that top panel can lift away. There's actually two screws right here. This might be easier than I thought. Let's put those over with the black screws of all the same thread. Alright. Alright now let's this might ha huh, this might actually pull away from that front panel if I lift that up. It's certainly the closest I'm looking like Getting to that, and this has a connection that can come off. This might be sort of reverse engineering how they assembled it. Yep. Ah, so that's only hooked in at the top. 
I think if I can take these off, um, we should be good. So what I need to do is just draw a quick diagram here and make note of which side those connections go to on a notepad. So draw ourselves a rectangle that you can't see off screen. Um, that's the front. Now there's our two heat sinks. Now that side is a black and that side is a blue. Okay. All the other connectors really don't, uh, they're pretty well polarized. You can't plug them in backwards. So we're just gonna unplug everything. That pretty well isolates that whole top circuit board, which then means we should be pretty well after those two screws, we should be free to, uh, to lift this up. And I need a bigger screwdriver. We'll be back. I got a bigger one. Now I can unscrew it. I could make a sexist joke there, but it has been brought to my attention that perhaps that might not be in the best of character to do those things. So I shall stop doing those things. All right, let's see if we can get this up. That one needs to go under there. This seems familiar. I think I've done this before on a different UPS. It's built much the same. All right. It does lift up and that pops out. Okay. And that's one of the battery wires off the bottom under that tremendous connection on the bottom of the board there. That says they were trying to compensate for something that maybe a corner they were cutting. All right. Now that was easy. All right. Not as hard as I thought. So let's hook these two batteries out. We will test them in a minute. Um, now let's get our other ones in that slot. That's our new ones. So we are going negative that way. Yes. And we're going in a series string because it's a 24 volt job. All right. There you go. These are heavy. Now, I wonder if we should test these. Let's find a meter. Let's see what voltage they are. So oh, I wonder if you guys can see the voltmeter there. There we go. Let's have a look here. 13.3 volts. They seem to be healthy, but uh, they might not have any capacity. This thing had a grand total of half a second before it shut down. So I'm hoping it's not the UPS itself that's the problem. Well, I should probably check the fuse holder while I'm here. Let's just double check this. All right. Fuse seems to be okay. All right. Put that back in. Well, let's um, let's continue the reassembly. I'm in for a penny, in for a pound now. That was dinner that came back. Um, so sorry about the funny sound in the background. This is the piece I'm looking for with the slot for the terminals. I'm thinking this current arrangement, I think I'm going to screw that down last and do it in the reverse order to what I did to get to this point. I'm going to take these guys off. I'm going to take our link cable and reattach. All right. Yeah, there we go. That goes in there. Let's find our main control board up here and attach like this. This is actually a lot easier than I had expected when I opened it, but about, on the, about what I had expected when it comes to doing a simple battery replacement. And interestingly, they don't encourage you to open up mains devices these days in the manuals. So, there's our top plate back in. Let's find our front screws. Um, these two self tappers can go in here. Luckily, I was about to say I've helpfully magnetized my screwdriver. I had not. Do that now across this rare earth magnet. So if we have enough magnetism to get that screw in. We do. It's real magnetism, not animal magnetism. That cheap off, that uh, cheap off-brand form of magnetism. 
So here we go. Insert into hole and turn and push. I've heard those instructions somewhere else. Okay, now um, let's take our notes. So our black is definitely on that side and our blue is definitely on the right side. That helps. Now, there's my two terminal screws here, which don't seem to be magnetic at all. They might be stainless. We attach our terminals here. Now, um, this is going to be fun. By the way, in case you haven't guessed at this point, this is pretty well much pretty much channel filler at the moment because I haven't got any great ideas at the second. I'm a little overwhelmed with medical stuff and NDIS applications and all that sort of stuff. And so my life is, consists largely of paperwork at the moment. So I'm doing stuff like this to keep you guys entertained whilst everything else happens. Now I see why they did that. I need to put this cable underneath everything so that uh, it doesn't get trimmed off when I put the case back on. So let's try and train this cable a bit so that we can shove it back under here. Well, actually, it really doesn't matter. I can come around and under that bit, and that will do pretty much the same thing. We can come up and around like that. I'm probably trying to avoid the high voltage section by doing that, but I think I'm pretty well doing that here as well. So we don't want low voltage wires running right next to high voltage areas because they do have a tendency to uh, cause some interference or problems. Yeah, I forgot to re-thread all these before I put the, this circuit board back on. So we're going to try and finudge these things through that gap on the side. Probably with the help of my little spudger here. And this is a metal spudger you watch. I'll short out that mystery capacitor that I can't find by doing that. And we'll have another episode a bit like the previous one where I uh, shortened a cable, a 24 volt cable, before I'd isolated it. And... Um, Took a big hunk out of my cutters. Ah, so that's our positive wire there, so we might as well reattach you. And then reattach that. It's obviously part of the charge monitoring circuit. Um, this lead needs to go up through here again. This is the transformer connections. So this has got 0, 190 volt, 220 volt and 250 volt up here. That's obviously how they uh, achieve the voltage dropping ability of this by multiple taps on the transformer okay so I think let's just before I hook the negative up again um, let's just double check everything is all pretty well we want it has a little system on a chip up here too as these things do which is nice um, all right now this is where it gets dangerous because I can potentially get mains voltage so I think I'm gonna leave that wire off while I turn it over and attach that battery mounting bracket this is something got heavy again. All right, let's go and see if I can line up the holes on the battery bracket. There's one. Oh. Is it in the, oh, I think I've got it in the thread. That's good. Another one here. Is this riveting stuff, guys, watching me do screws up? All right. For this bit, I've got two screws to add here, but the batteries are leaning that way and it's pulling it too far away from the threads. So, I'm going to have to pull this over this way and get the batteries in position so I can push that bracket down slightly. And hopefully I can get a thread take up through the bottom here. Yeah. And I can also see where the screw should be lining up. Yep, yeah, there we go. I might get one or two threads to bite and then I'll be cooking with gas if I can do that. I kind of just love magnets. They're great when you want them to do things but they're not great when you don't want them to stick to stuff. Alright, 
push this down. I might get that screw to take up. Almost there. Come on, screw. You can do it. Yep, we're in. As David EV blog says, we're in like Flynn. Although he says it was a slightly cloud pitch, slightly more nasal voice, which is quite unique. Um, love his channel, but his voice does wear on the nerves after a little while, so I do sometimes have to take a break from watching his stuff. If I could just find a way to shift his register down a little bit, it'd be good. I'd watch it all day. Okay, let's put the lid on. And actually, at this point, um, before we put the lid on, we better hook up our negative wire. And that's when we keep our feet, our hands out of the bitey bitey zap zap bits. Okay. And that seems very loose. I think I want to tighten that a tiny bit. Um, let's tighten that terminal just a touch. Okay. Let's do this. Put you in there. Not tight enough. Give it a little bit more of a go. Alright. There we go. That's much better. Alright, now I think we can turn this thing on without the mains now. Whoop. Aha. What's our battery say? 95 volts and I can hear the inverter buzzing or 95 percent so we are doing all right let's turn you off all right cool I think it might have been the batteries so now let's get the cover back on there is one cover all right this reminds me of when computer cases first started getting really cheap. And uh, it was not the heyday of computing, I will say that much. I think uh, when computers started getting cheap, it was about the same time that I got my AMD Duron 750. Um, I think that was the one. Uh, I've had so many computers over the years, I'm starting to forget all the numbers and names of them. I do know that I have a Ryzen 9 3950X now with an X570 1TB SSD on an M.2 uh, port, uh, socket, and 64 gig of RAM, and uh, oh, I forget what video card I've got now, uh, GTX 1660 Super. I think, and yes, I know I could have got an RTX 3070 and stuff, but I didn't want to spend $2,000 on a card. I figured 500 bucks was about enough, and I have just dropped a screw. So we will comb the floor with a magnet later, um, and find out how badly or how important that screw is. I'm willing to bet it's one of the case screws, because I only have a few more of these to go. Like, namely three more screws and I've got two more screws sitting on the bench and that one is going to be in the way we'll leave that for the moment that might be where our missing screw is meant to go as in the hole that is a problem let's do all of this right I don't go looking for that screw I know what will happen it'll be like 10 years later and I'll be like hey I want to use this and there's a new screw missing and that will probably completely and utterly turn me off doing anything because it's got a screw missing now truth be told give me a quick second to look on the floor ah, I found it yay for 12 volt under desk lights it's good for Checking if you've had an underwear malfunction, finding loose screws, and I have a visitor. Give me a minute. Now, this is where camera angles and audio both get kind of tricky. I've got to put this back in service. It means moving stuff. 
this. Uh, Apparently I have a full bottle of acetone that I didn't know about. It would have been nice if it leaked. Alright. I have a big long USB lead. Alright, let's put this back on its blocks. There's probably about 30 kilos in this. The trick is putting it down so it doesn't crush its own lead. Alright, here's all extra screws from the other stuff. Pick them up before we lose them. This lot can come out of the way. Now, this is my desk supply. Where are we here? That one. Now. This one is my RCD. Difficult to be in there. Oh. Oh. Right, there's one more to go. It was speed lead. Power down. Let's see if we can get power on. Now let's reset this. We should be cooking with gas if we've done everything right. All my monitors have come back on. So my TV's come back on. And let's see what else. Excuse the mess on the desk, guys. It is upgrade time. We've got no signal here, but I would expect to see DVR happening shortly. Let's see if I've got main power here. All right, nope, DVR is back up. Raspberry Pi 4 is back up. Um, we're seeing DVR accessing files. It's doing a little flashy thing there. Doing well. Now to do something crazy and unplug the mains and see what happens. Could potentially corrupt something, but see how we go. Yeah, it's working. Okay, that's better than it did last time. <laughs> and it didn't damage the boot up on anything. All the cameras are coming back online. Computer's back online. I think we had a win. All right, now to take the dead batteries around to my old man so he can make some pocket money getting them recycled. All right, hope you had fun. This is UPS replacement, or battery replacement rather. I'm going to clean up the rest of my desk and uh, I'm going to call it quits on a Friday night. I'm going to have a snooze. See you all later.